Alright, let's start this. So, middle of last week, I published a blog post pretty much confirming that I have to go in for surgery. I'm just going to cut straight to it. I'm explaining what exactly happened, the experiences I went through, my recovery time, how long am I out for, lessons to be learned, what you guys can take away from it, and obviously what direction will my channel and Nathan Paul Football in general, what direction I'll be taking over the next couple of months. So I'll just explain what I've got first. So I've been diagnosed with an inguinal hernia. And that's basically I've got a little tear in the lower part, right part of my abdomen towards the groin area and that hip flexor region. And it's a little lump of tissue that has grown into it. And that's causing all my pain down there at the moment. And basically the doctor said that if, I've, if I won't have any chance of playing competitively again, I need to get surgery on it. So obviously the best choice of action for me was, is to get this done as quickly as possible. So in my case, the cause of this hernia was the fact that I was overtraining. And we had a really long season. And we're honestly, in our last two weeks, and we're about to play our last game of the season, last postseason game, a cup game. So I'll just quickly explain my experiences leading up to the injury. So about a week and a half before our cup game, on the Tuesday, it was early October. So I did three sessions on that Tuesday. So in the morning, I did a light technical session. Middle of the day, I did a strength session in my local gym. And then that Tuesday night, we had a conditioning session with our team. Now, everything was all good up until then. I thought that Tuesday, you know, training was great. And I feel like I accomplished something and I was sharp with my touch. I was feeling ready, preparing for that postseason game. Now, that next day on the Wednesday, I went out and did another like technical session and that was my last YouTube video actually which I'll post up here right now. Now towards the last part of the light technical session in that three phase drill I felt a slight twinge in my hip flexor region and honestly it didn't feel that much, it just felt a little bit tight. It just maybe because I'd had three sessions the day before and I thought you know I'll go a few more reps to see how it goes and if the pain's still there then I'll stop but the pain subsided within the space of five minutes. And it was really strange, I thought, and I thought nothing of it. Now we're going to fast forward 10 hours. So later that night, we had a game against our youth grade side. Now the reason for that, we want to get match fitness up, because we hadn't had a game in two weeks. Our last game was our grand final. Now during that game, that's where I really started to feel tight. And it was about the 60th, I think 70th minute. My legs were really, really fatigued. And I remember this one incident. I was tracking back on the midfield, defending an attacking player and he quickly changed direction. And as I pushed off, and as my right leg extended to turn back, I felt that twinge again. The exact same twinge that I felt in that light technical session earlier that, that morning. Now, if that pain stays there, I'm gonna ask the coach, hey, I need to come off. But after five minutes, once again, that pain subsided and it just felt like nothing happened again. And again, the only, the only pain I was feeling or that uncomfortableness was that tightness and that fatigue in my legs, not so much a, um, a tear. Anyway, so post-game, I really made sure I was eating the right amount of protein, carbohydrates, just to make sure I recover uh, my muscles properly. And I went through my game day stretching routine as well, which I'll post up here. And after that night, I was still feeling tight, especially in that groin region. That next day, we had another training session with the team, and it was more of a recovery session. But during that recovery session, it just got worse and I felt really, really tired. Even though the session was probably 45 minutes of actually playing, it was still really tight. After that session, I decided not to stretch, just in case there was a slight tear in any of those muscles in that, that region. And here's a good coaching point. So if you feel like you've torn something or something there's not right, you, know, you can tell the difference between when you're tight and when something has tweaked or when something you, you feel stretched in a certain area. If you, feel that, if you feel that pain, it's in that threshold of, hey, maybe I might have stretched it a bit too far. It's really important you don't stretch that because you stretch it further, you could damage it further. So it's really important to let it recover on its own just for that first 24 to 48 hours. Obviously, I want you to seek medical attention if it's a bad tear, okay? But something that's just a slight twinge, give about 24 hours or 48 hours before you stretch. So, and that's what I did. So I didn't stretch until that Saturday. So I went from that Thursday night through to Saturday without doing any football. So I didn't train on that Friday. I just want to completely rest it just to make sure I'm ready for that game. 
And on that Sunday, we had another game against our youth grade side. Another full 90 minutes, and I thought, hey, I'm going to give this a go again. First 20 minutes was fine. You know, everything was fine. My muscles felt great. My touch was great. But after that first 20 minutes, I could just feel all that area starting to hurt again. Now, this time, it extended into my stomach region as well. So it's starting to hurt my groin region, hip flexor region, and all in that abdominal area. And in some cases, even crept over to my left side. Now I thought, yep, yeah, that is definitely not right. Um, I still, I still went through the game. I, I thought, hey, I want that match fitness. I need to be ready for this game. You know, it, this game is probably a once in a lifetime opportunity. Now, especially in that last ten minutes of the game, it progressively got worse. And I was at the point where I was struggling to even jog. And it's all that Sunday night again, I just completely left, left out the stretching. And I was talking to mum and dad and a few friends, and they recommended me to go and see. A physiotherapist. Now before I saw a physiotherapist I wanted to make sure that it was nothing to do with my, my systems or my organs or anything like that because I was definitely feeling that stomach region and I've never felt pain like that before in my life. So that Monday morning I went to the doctors and he basically felt a lump, a small lump just in my hip flexor region and he said this is possibly an uh, inguinal hernia or a sports hernia and I asked him what's, <laughs> what's that and he said with my situation and me playing football and being really active, uh, if you want to continue doing that, you may need to have surgery on it. And oh, my head just dropped. Even just thinking about it now, it, it gets to me. It possibly doesn't just ruin my chance to play this game, but ruins my plans for what's coming up over the next few months, which I'll explain in a sec. Anyway, so the doctor recommended I go and see a specialist and get an ultrasound scan on this just to confirm whether or not it is a hernia. And that next day, I booked an appointment. I wanted to get this clear and out of my head. So I went in and I had that ultrasound and basically it came back saying, yes, I've got a sports hernia. Over those next couple of days, I really, I was quiet on social media. I was quiet on YouTube. I just I needed that time to reflect on on this whole ex injury experience. I'll tell you now, like I let out a lot of emotion just because the doctor told me recovery time and it wasn't looking good for my plans for the end of this season. Basically, I can't get in for surgery for another month or two just because there's a massive waiting list at the moment. Now, after surgery, I have to have six to eight weeks off before I can start training intensely again. So in total, so waiting time for surgery plus my recovery time, that's equaling three months possibly. Now my plans for the end of the year, so you guys may have heard my last few videos that I was building up to this new vlog series. And basically it was gonna be a series where I was gonna go overseas and trial for a few teams to showcase my journey over there through a vlog series. But now the chance of that happening, it's not looking great. You know, I always say to you guys, you need to take risks in order to get what you want out of life. And the bigger your goal, the more risks you're going to have to take. You know, I want to risk that. You know, I, w <laughs> you know, I want to go over and trial badly. You know, I'm 22. This is it. You know, I've only got a couple of years left to make it. You know, somewhere in my mind, it's telling me, hey, get through this. You'll be fine. Go out there and do this. You know, you only live once. That sort of mindset. But at the same time, you know, you've got to be smart. You know, there's other side of my brain saying, by the time you recover and start training intensely again, there's only going to be a few weeks before your trials happen. And to be honest, like, I haven't had this much of a layoff before, but I know that my touch, you know, I'm going to lose a bit of my touch. I'm going to lose especially that sharpness, that match fitness, that strength. You know, the whole training session series this season, my whole 2017 program was the foundation blocks for what's about to come with my trials. And basically I've been preparing for these trials all of this year. So for the last 10 months, most of that work is just, we're going to go back to square one again. And I mean, you never know. Like, I'm not saying that I give up and I'm not going to do this anymore. Like. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and get my rehab done 100%, like no doubt. I'm always willing to put 100% in, in everything, what, no matter what my situation is. Obviously, I still want to be able to trial over there, and I'm going to go through this process 100%, with 100% focus and effort, and I'm going to see how I go once I recover, and I will make a decision after that first week of training. But there's going to be a lot of negatives. Some of those negatives include, you know, I'm not going to have enough time 
to get my match fitness back, my match sharpness in time for trials. You know, I don't, I don't want to be spending three grand going overseas, having my trials, you know, and not making it. But at the same time, who knows? I might be ready. I'm, I might be able to get my surgery in quicker. My recovery time might be better if I eat right and I'm, I listen to everything the surgeon says. So you never know what's going to happen. Which brings me to my next point. So the plan for Nathan Paul Football, for my YouTube channel and all my social media pages, I'm going to be doing a Road to Recovery series. Basically, I'm going to be taking you through my experience with my surgery, with my recovery time, what I'm going to be doing in my recovery time. And hopefully that can help you guys when you go through an injury. And you never know, you might be suffering in green or hernia from overtraining. You know, there's not many videos out there that take you through this experience. And that's what I want to showcase. So I definitely want the Road to Recovery series to show you that you can put 100% in no matter your situation. Okay, so I'm going to be completely out of action for three months from any individual training. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to be doing in those three months to improve. I may not be able to improve my touch and my physical and technical skills, but I can improve in other areas, not just with football, but in life as well. And that's what I want to show you guys that, you know, life is going to chuck a mountain in front of you. It's always going to chuck you something. You know, it's always going to be a challenge, especially if your goals are this high. It's a long journey to the top. Yeah. Okay. So it's going to be mountains and hurdles and obstacles that are going to get in front of you and it's your job and your decision to climb over that and keep your eye on that goal you know you can sulk all you want but that's not going to get you anywhere so if there's anything i want you to take away from injury when once again injury is it's okay to be emotional and to be negative but only for a short amount of time you know, as humans you know emotion is something that we need to show and i've already had that period it lasted about three or four days where I was, I was down in the dumps, but once I've had that reflection, once I've learned my lessons, I start to think positive again. You know, what can I do in my situation now to improve? And what are the positives in this situation? And a big positive that I want to tell you guys is that I'm still able to coach. So I'm still able to walk around, I can pass a ball, I can throw a ball, okay? As long as I don't lift anything heavy or I do any sort of sprint work, or high intensity exercise. And that means I can still coach football. Now I know most of you who follow me have subscribed to my channel because of the individual training content on here. You know, and and that's definitely one of my core values with Nathan Paul football and with myself. I 100% believe individual, individual training will improve you as a player. Now obviously I feel bad and I feel I'll, I'm letting you down by not being able to post any more individual content for the next three months. But the next best thing I can do is because I can still coach, because I can see the positive in that. In my local area, I coach one-on-one -on -one sessions. And what I'm gonna do is, with most of my one-on-one -on -one sessions, I'm gonna be showcasing the player that I'm coaching, okay? So instead of me, I'm gonna be taking you guys through individual drills that my client or my player is going through as well. And I'll still be explaining each drill, what it's good for, why you need to do it, the positives, the negatives of it, and whatnot. Just a complete analysis like I normally do with my training session series, except one of my players are gonna be performing the drills. The least I can do for you guys. Honestly, you guys are amazing, yeah? I love your support. I love the engagement I get with this channel, you know? I was surprised the, with the amount of messages that you guys sent me when you first heard the injury, and honestly, every single message means a lot. And that has definitely helped me get out of that negative and reflective stage. You know, it really does help when you're surrounded by positive minds and positive people. And I want, I want you guys to let me know in the comment section below what you think of these ideas. If, if you have any other ideas that you might like to see on my channel over the next three months, please don't hesitate to comment down below. I'll always answer you back, okay? Also, just one more thing to take away from this video. I forgot to mention this earlier, but my inguinal hernia was suffered from overtraining. And I always tell you guys to train and train and train. You know, you need to work hard to get where you want. But at the same time, you need to look at the other side of the spectrum where you do need to really listen to your body. And, and that's a lesson that I've learned over the last few weeks. You really don't know how much of a risk it is. Keep going when you don't listen to your body, when you ignore it. You know, as soon as you feel that slight tweak and it just doesn't feel right, when that first doubt creeps in your mind, you need to really analyze yourself you need to make a smart decision on the spot 
and you know I'd love to go back a few weeks and not go through a training session that Wednesday morning. Maybe those three sessions that I did on the Tuesday was a bit too much and I would do anything to go back and change that right now. But that's life and you need to move on. You no, know, like I said, don't dwell on the past. It's the future now, it's the present. What can you do now to make yourself better today and tomorrow? I think that's the best thing to take away from this video, especially for those of you that are going through injuries. Another thing, if you guys are going through an injury at the moment, please comment down below. You know, I'm sure other people, and I know myself, I'll definitely respond and I'll definitely be giving you positive ideas, positive motivation. So I think that's all that needs to be said at this point. So definitely, I'm going to get back into it, okay? So once or twice a week now, I'll be uploading content to you guys. If you found this video helpful or you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out a lot. Also, comment down below, like I said, of any injuries that you may have or any ideas that you may have for the future for my channel. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button, guys. NPF's going to continue on bringing quality content to you guys weekly. All right, guys. Thanks for that. See you later.